Hello, everybody. Or as we say in the northern part of Germany, Moin miteinander. Thank you very much for your invitation and for the very friendly introduction. Let me first introduce my state, Lower Saxony, a little bit to you. We are a state with 8 million people, so we are number four uh, of 16 states in the Federal Republic. We are number two of landscape. We are number one of agriculture, car industry, and uh, that's a new number one of renewable energies. So also with a, cl a clear perspective for the next years to come. So thank you very much for having the opportunity to reflect together with all of you how we can regain an offensive of the democratic left in a period of fundamental changes and increasing tensions. Today we are talking about a restart in Europe and about transatlantic alliances for a progressive policy in the face of a variety of challenges. Needless to say, the U.S. are not Europe. Different political systems, let's take only the right to vote, and a different, very different political culture distinguish Europe and America, the Federal Republic of Germany, and the United States, and Delaware, and Niedersachsen from each other. Nevertheless, we are confronted with the similar difficulties. Our open democracies are very hard under pressure. A considerable number of people turn away disappointed from the state or politics. Either do not vote, vote at all anymore or choose political show-offs. It is absolute, absolutely necessary to think about how we can inspire those people again who feel homeless and unheard. So what is to be done? The most famous sticky note in recent history hung in the campaign headquarters of the Democratic campaign for the 1994 presidential elections and read, it's economy stupid. Where and under what conditions do people work? What about their social security? This is still the decisive question. That must be the central point of all our thoughts. And to concrete this point, we are in a time of fundamental changes and the vast majority of people feel this very clearly. So what's then the task of left-wing politics? More than one and a half decades ago, the SPD in Germany conducted an election campaign in Germany with the slogan, security and change. For me, these three words, security and change, put out our tasks of today in a nutshell. If we succeed in demonstrating competently and credibly how, despite globalization and digitization, despite individualization and over-economization, work and social security are secured and recreated, we will be able to regain a great deal of trust. I'm convinced of this because that is, from my experiences, was, is at the heart of the major, majority of the population. The economic side is indeed of paramount importance. New technologies are changing revolutionary the world of labor. These days, additionally, we are facing the challenge of balancing economy, economy and ecology. And last not least, the contrast between capital and labor has by no means disappeared. It must always be, the, always be the policy of the democratic left to stand up for good work that is fairly paid and social secured. There should be no doubt about that at all. In the end, social policy is also practiced because those who eliminate economic inequalities pursue a real policy of prevention. After all, social problems such as poverty, crime, violence are often closely linked to economic precariousness. 
In addition to this economic significance, however, there's also a social significance that cannot be neglected, especially in times of polarized societies. Work is a place of meeting and exchange. It is a place of encounter where something is accomplished collectively. You do something together with your colleagues. It gives meaning. Making oneself useful is one of the most frequently mentioned answers given by the employees to the question of what motivates them every day in their work. Employees experience a sense of belonging in their job. And that should, especially by left politicians, never be underestimated. Continuity in the local workplace, the community in the cycle of colleagues, identification with the employee, in short, rooting through work, all these are important soft factors, especially in uncertain times. Also for solidarity and for the cohesion of our society. For many people, work is a piece of home. I'm convinced we have underestimated this and instead set priorities on flexibility and market options, especially under the flag of neoliberalism. Changes in the world of work to always involve fundamental mechanisms of social coexistence. Therefore, we cannot simply wait and see. Rather, we must actively advocate that, for example, changes in employment, biographics, are not stigmatized as failure. New orientations must be possible without leading to a complete crash. This is a real problem in Germany. Education and qualification are long life periods, and we have to establish this as a real important task of left politics. The internal climate in companies and institutions must also become more democratic. Those who want satisfied employees need to make them participate. When employees are valued, companies receive important impulses. This, however, requires companies to drive these processes forward. To sum it up, if these aspects are taken into account, technical developments should be less as a threat than seen as an opportunity. And this is a challenge for left politicians. There is no sh shortage of tasks. Digitization and artificial, artificial intelligence will turn the world of work upside down. Climate protection and decarbonization will force industry to restructure. In Lower Saxony, as I said, a focal point of the automotive industry, we know exactly what enormous efforts are involved. It's not just about industry and cars. It is about the future of thousands of jobs. That's why we have to combine labor and climate protection together. The clearer and the better we succeed in creating work and social security under these conditions, the more successful we will be. So, dear friends, it is not just about the political content. It is also about the form of politics. It's a very important point for me. The international success of populism is also the result of a tough elite critique. Many people have less and less confidence in the political, economic, and intellectual leadership of their state. This criticism is traditionally a privilege of the political left, of ours. Unfortunately, however, parts of the population understand the political left now as part of the establishment, which they criticize and regard as distanced, far removed, and untrustworthy. Those people are often the so-called people who work hard and play by the rules, to quote one last time an American politician, Bill Clinton. According to its own self-image, the democratic left works specially for the interests exactly of these people. 
and it makes it all the more painful to note a distance that can hardly be denied. The causes may lie less in the content of politics than in the appearance of politics. Let us take this evening as an example. Sorry to say this, this now. We are sitting in a cool, con not so cool, <laughs> in a hot, little bit hot conference venue, but in a cool style, in Berlin Mitte. We are primarily cosmopolitan academics and probably hold more or less the same views. The unheard people we are talking about are certainly not here. In political reality, this is perhaps not even the exception, but the rule. This leads to politicians mostly being perceived only through the media as relative, relatively elevated beings who no longer have much to do with the normal people's everyday lives. So politicians, that's my experience from many meetings, sometimes seem to be like aliens from a very other system. In such a situation, in connection with the uncertainties described at the beginning, a gap arises. It is not a harmless gap. Populists can use it for their criticism of the elites, but also as a base for their simple as well as false answers. How can this, I feel very clearly, and satisfactory situation be changed. This is a challenging task, and there is not one big formula. In my personal experience, however, it helps a lot to use every opportunity to leave one's own bubble. In other words, going to the citizens instead of making statements, listening instead of talking first and foremost, to discuss instead of delivering speeches, especially left politicians, has to be close to the people, I'm convinced. Citizens meetings, town hall meetings, for example, are much more satisfying than the, from Germany, traditional political events with speeches and panel discussions. That applies to the visitors of such discussions and that regularly applies to me because I learned permanently at those meetings. And perhaps something else needs to be taken to heart. Uh, really, many of these critical citizens I'm talking about completely wrong with their suspicion that their own achievements are not sufficiently respected. Those who transfer shares from A to B at the push of a button, button and make a lot of money with it may not work as hard, for example, as a nurse working shifts. This is what we have to point out, and the, these are the people we need to focus on. Getting them in a better position is the, fir is the first step to regain trust. Dear friends, one final comment. We must talk about political content, we must also talk about political culture, but what is the political purpose? Many of the fundamental changes in our time described at the beginning also bring back great benefits, and I will not belittle that. But all of them amount to subjecting our lives to the needs of economic rationality and to advancing individualization. This is not the human image that the political left has always represented. This has always been a matter of forming communities, representing common interests, and above all, keeping them together. Traditionally, the concept of solidarity has always, always stood for this. Today, we may more modern speak of cohesion, in German, I often use the word Zusammenhalt, but the content 
remains essentially the same. This content corresponds to a basic human need. To stand up for this value is just as important today and meets the needs of most people just as it has always done. Cohesion, by the way, is always is also the sharpest contrast to the doctrines of populism, which is completely intended to divide society and to exclude a part of their members. Cohesion and solidarity are the best alternative to all the perils of the political right. To summarize that all, I'm convinced that the best advice we can give ourselves is to defend this fundamental idea of cohesion and word and deed every day and all over the world. This might be the best fundament for a comeback of progressive politics. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.